Hello everybody, it's time for another little bit of TRT Q&A and today's question, which is a very common one, is should or can you split Nibido for your TRT injections, right? Nibido is also called Riandron or Avid, I believe, but for the purpose of this video, we'll talk about Nibido. So can you and should you split Nibido? Well, first of all, can you split Nibido? Of course you can. You take it, you in, you draw up half and you draw up the other half and there it's done. The question is, should you split Nibido? And the short answer to that question for those of you that don't want any of the background behind us is no, you probably shouldn't, right? For the rest of you that want a bit more context to that answer, let's get into the sort of crux of it. So, Nibido, the way it was designed is to be a long-term or a long-lasting testosterone injection, right? How it's designed is it's put in a special oil, you inject a large volume of it, usually uh, four milliliters or a thousand milligrams, and you inject it into a large muscle like the glute, right? And what happens when you inject that Nibido is that it, all the oil sort of forms a depot or a deposit, right? And it sits there. And then over a long period, usually anywhere between eight to 14 weeks, it slowly releases that testosterone for your body to use. And the reason that they've designed it this way is so that you avoid the sort of peaks and troughs of you know, more frequent injections, you know, ones that you do maybe once a week or once every two or three days. It's meant to be one of the easier to administrate in injections so that you can go in, get your shot, and then forget about it for a couple of weeks or maybe even a couple of months. Now, how it works initially is when you get that injection, right? It puts that whole large bunch of oil into the glute and uh, initially a large amount of that will get absorbed and the, your sort of testosterone levels will sort of go up. And then they, it sort of tapers off with time, you know? Initially, you, it releases slightly more and then it gets released slightly less and slightly less and slightly less until eventually tapers off, like I said. And so what it does is it gets you quickly into the normal zone. And I think what I'll do is I'll put a picture up on the screen over here so that it clearly illustrates what I'm talking about. You can see by the yellow line what happens when you inject Nibido, right? So it goes up, gets you into the normal zone, and slowly with time it sort of tapers off and eventually it gets you down to the lower testosterone levels. You know, I think in the graph here it says about maybe to five or 10, right? Which is very low, even 15 is quite low. but so that's how it works. And then as you sort of taper off, you know, you get your follow-up injection and that sort of boosts you up. And then they take, and then you have another, what is it, eight or 10 or 12 or 14 weeks as it tapers off. Now, let's discuss whether you should actually split it and what happens when you split it. So I'm gonna put another graph up on the screen. This one was a little bit of a bitch to figure out. I had to talk to my doctor and put a bit of thought into it, but so um, I, I'm still not quite, 100% sure if this is the correct approach, but I believe it is and I stand corrected though. So if any of you want to provide background information on this, if I am off on this, then feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. But this makes sense. And after the discussion I had with my doctor, it seems to be what's happening. So as you'll see on the screen there, what I've done is I've, I've done sort of a rough uh, in red line of more or less what you can expect to happen when you inject half a shot of Nibido. So let's say you split it. You only want to do half now and then half, you know, maybe, I don't know, five or six weeks later, I don't know, however, it's not meant to be split, first of all. Just, just to give you more background on the video, it's not meant to be split, it's a long-lasting testosterone, like we said earlier, it's designed to avoid peaks and troughs, so you shouldn't really be splitting it like you can with other testosterones. But anyway, back to the graph. So here what I've done is I've tried to illustrate a rough example of what would happen if you inject just half a shot of Nibido, for example, let's say you split it into two. So from what I can gauge is you'll get half the volume of that Nibido going into the deposit, right? Into the glute. You'll in in inject into the glute, maybe you'll only put two milliliters in instead of four, and then uh, it sits there and then tapers off with time. But what happens is because it's half the amount, I imagine that the peak that you would get initially, the boost that you would get, you know, to get you from the low levels higher up, to start off with is not going to be as drastic as it would with a full shot of Nibido. So what might happen is you'll see in the beginning the shot will go up and it may get you into the normal levels but it's not going to get you as high as the full shot would have and it's going to come out of those normal levels or get to the low end of the range a lot quicker. So I think what's going to happen is that first of all if you don't get as high as you would with a normal shot 
You may put yourself at risk of not even having your symptoms clear up at all. Maybe you need to get to 20 or 25 in order for your symptoms to clear. And if you do half a shot, maybe you only get up to 15 or 20, and that's not enough for your symptoms to clear up. So your testosterone, your testosterone might go up, but it might not be enough to get your, your out of your symptoms or to clear your symptoms. Now let's say that it does. Let's say it just gets you maybe above at 15 or 20, and your symptoms do clear, but then it's gonna drop significantly again after that, and then it might be a matter of days or one week or whatever before you come down to the low end again, and then your symptoms start to clear again. So you, I think by halving it or splitting it even further, you put yourself actually at more risks of peaks and troughs. So, you know, again, this is very subjective. Um, this is based on what I've heard from my doctor and the research that I've done, but the crux of this video is to tell you that it's probably not wise to split libido. It wasn't designed for that. You know, it's, it's, it's not, there's not a lot of experience with that and we don't know what's gonna happen when you do do that. So rather, let's look at alternatives. So what are the two alternatives here? Number one is you can stick with your full shot of libido, right? But if you find that it's wearing off, maybe sooner than they said it would. Like they normally say 10 to 14 weeks, but from my personal experience and many guys I've spoken to, that happens um, in many cases a, a lot beforehand. So in my case, I was getting a follow-up injection instead of at every maybe 12 weeks, I was getting my follow-up injection at eight weeks. And that's what you can do too. Instead of splitting the shot, have the full shot, but instead of waiting the full period, just get your next injection sooner than you normally would and feel it out. Maybe for you it's 10 weeks, maybe it's eight, maybe it's seven, maybe it's more. You know, feel it out and work with your doctor to feel when you're coming off and you're feeling the symptoms kick in again so that you know, okay, it was the eight week mark. Now maybe I need to come in for my shot at the seven or seven and a half week mark just to avoid the, the, the trough. Now the other alternative is if you're really one of these people that's keen on splitting your injections for whatever reason it is that you decided that, then maybe consider switching to a different testosterone that's designed for more frequent injections like enanthate or sipinate, which is actually a fairly long a testosterone too. I think those are five to eight days. Or maybe something like sustenone. You know, I, I'm not sure what your reasons are for wanting to split the testosterone. I believe you probably just want to avoid the peaks and the troughs. So with Nibido, it's designed to avoid the peaks and troughs. So if you are finding that you're coming down off it and feeling the symptoms, you know, that's not because of Nibido per se. That's because just because it's wearing off in your particular personal case sooner than what uh, it does for other people. And maybe you just need your follow-up shot a lot sooner or a bit, a bit yeah, a, a bit sooner. So that's it really. Um, I hope that provides a bit of context. Nibido isn't really designed to be split, so probably the best not to do it. Again, it's up to you what you guys decide and you know what you and your doctor decide, but you've got two alternatives there to consider. And I hope that clears things up and makes everything clear for you. Uh, if you have any questions, then just let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.